In previous videos, we've created a Google API client, and we've also described the Fuse location provider. So in this video, we're going to decide what to do in the onConnected method of our activity. Now, what's the importance of this onConnected method? The onConnected method is defined in an interface called Google API client dot, uh, connection callback. Our class implements that, that interface, and because it implements that interface, it has to provide a definition for this onConnected method. Now, the onConnected method is passed to our Google API client via this method here, add connection callbacks. And you see we are passing an object of the current class to onConnection callbacks. So we did all that in a previous video. Now we have to decide what's going to happen with, when this onConnected method is invoked. The onConnected method will be invoked sometime after we call a connect method on Google API client. A word of warning, we have not done that yet. We have not invoked the connect method, so we're not going to be able to fully demonstrate the end product of our work in this video, but we will in the next video where we take a look at the Android activity lifecycle. But nonetheless, that's a conversation for our next video. And on connected, I'm going to invoke a method called request location updates. I have not defined this method yet, so it's going to show up with a red line, alt enter, and I can create that method. In this method request location updates, I'm going to invoke location services dot fuse location API and then dot request location updates. All I'm saying here is that I want to start being notified when my device's location has changed. And so I need to pass in three arguments to this request location updates. One is a Google API client, which we've created up above. Another is a location request, which we've not yet created. And the final item is a location listener, which we also have not created. So this line is not going to compile just yet, not until we, we make a couple of changes to our project. So let's go up to where our onCreate method is, and let's start by looking at this Google API client. Issue number one is this variable here is local to the method, and it is only in scope in the area that I've highlighted, where we actually need it to be available all the way down on this method that we just created, that on, on connection method. Just a moment. Uh, this method right here. So to make a variable visible to multiple methods, we have to convert it from a local variable to a field. So in Android Studio, I'll put my cursor on the variable, hold Alt, press Enter, and say split into declaration and assignment. Alt, Enter one more time. Um, actually, I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna take this, what was created, Control X, uh, take that declaration, and I'm going to move it up here. Up here, I mean this area which is within the class but not within a method. In other words, I've promoted this variable from being a local variable to being an attribute, and now that it's an attribute, it's available down in a different method, request location updates, and I can say Google API client, and you see that it is recognized. So that works for my very first argument, uh, Google API client. I also have to handle location request and location listener. Let's go back up to the onCreate method and let's consider location request. Whoops. So for location request, I'm going to say new location request. So invoke a uh, alt enter. Uh, let's see, we'll import that. Invoke the constructor location request. Now this is going to create a location request object, but I'm not doing anything with the object let, so, yet. So I'll hold alt. Uh, control alt and press F and that's going to declare a variable to hold this object but that variable is going to be a special type it will be an attribute field uh, member variable whatever you want to call it in other words it's the variable type that's available in multiple methods within this class so I simply say initialize in current method uh, and remember to get here I held down control alt and pressed F initialize in current method and let's take a look at what we have we are creating a new location request object, storing it into a variable called location request, and because I held Control Alt and pressed F, it's declaring that variable up here on line number 50. As a matter of, as a, as a matter of fact, while I'm up here, let me make my Google API client private as well. There we go. Okay, once again, because the variable is declared up here within the class but not within a method, I can go back down to my fused location API and I can add this as our second object. Notice it shows up in purple. 
and that indicates that we do have visibility to this variable from the method request location updates. But what's the purpose of the location request? Well, the location request is where we set some parameters on how frequently we want to request updates and how frequently we're willing to receive updates. So if I say location request and then I say set interval, that means how often in milliseconds do I want to request updates? So I'll put in 60,000. Now this means I'm willing to uh, I, I'm willing to take the energy to compute my GPS location every one minute. If you look on an Android phone, you can look at an application and see how much battery it's using and how much location and GPS it's using, which tends to drain the battery. So we don't want to make this too frequent, but we do want to make it frequent enough to get reliable updates. So 60,000 in this case represents what? At 60,000 milliseconds, which represents a minute. 60,000, maybe we happen to know that's a minute, but nonetheless, it's still a magic number, which we don't like having in code. So I'm going to control alt C, which is going to extract this to a uh, constant. A constant is a variable where the value doesn't change. And I'm just going to call it one minute, just like so. A bit more readable. After that, I'm going to say location request. And I'm going to say set fastest interval. Now what's fastest interval? We can piggyback on other applications that are running on our device. And if they're requesting location information, we can get that location information from them and it will not count against us when we take a look at our app and see how much battery it's using for GPS updates. So it's a nice way to take advantage of any other application like Maps that might currently be running get location information with that without actually spending the battery power to figure the location yourself. But on the flip side, how often are we willing to be updated by another app? Maybe every time we get a new location, we do some mathematical process that takes a while. So we don't want to be running that process every one second. Here we're setting a lower boundary. We're saying, okay, uh, let's decide how frequently we are willing to accept updates. Maybe I'm willing to accept updates four times per minute. In that case, I'll just say one minute divided by four. So remember, set interval, how, willing, how often I am willing to make the GPS computations myself. Set fastest interval, how frequently I'm willing to get GPS updates by piggybacking on a different application. Finally, we need to say location request and we need to say set priority. And for this, I'll say location request and you'll see that we have uh, four different priorities from which we can choose. High accuracy means we want frequent updates and we want very accurate updates. Of course, that is the ideal world to get frequent and highly accurate updates, but it does consume some battery power. So that's the flip side as we know we're going to be eating up a lot of battery. Low power means, okay, we just kind of need to know roughly where we are. Maybe it's a store locator and I don't need to know the exact square meter where a user happens to be, but I need to know a vicinity, maybe a street intersection within maybe a mile or two, something like that. So that would be good for low power. Balanced means somewhere between high and low power, something that is not tremendously accurate, um, but doesn't consume a whole lot of data either. So uh, maybe tell me where I am within a neighborhood or something like that. Uh, no power is an interesting one because this is one where you're purely piggybacking on other applications and you're not doing any location computations yourself. So this is a nice one if you just want to say, hey, what's the weather where you are? And uh, maybe where you are only needs to update a couple times a day, not every single minute, not every single 10 seconds. Now, because I'm GPSing a plant in my use case, I could GPS several hundred plants in one day. So I'm going to need relative, relatively frequent updates. So I'm going to go with high accuracy. So interval, fastest interval, and priority are now recorded on this location request object. And this location request object is getting passed into our request location updates method. So Google API client and location request. And we have one more. The one more is a location listener. The location listener is an object that gets invoked anytime we get a new location. So let's take a look at what a location listener actually is. 
Well, guess what? A location listener is an interface, and we know a little bit about interfaces now. We know it's easy to add an interface to an existing class. If we take a look, it has a method called onLocationChanged. This is probably one of our most important methods because this is called whenever our location is changed. And keep in mind, we've set the guidelines of we want to make the computation every one minute, uh, and we're also willing to receive updates every 15 seconds. So this is the method that is going to get invoked whenever we have a location change. Now, where do we want to take some behavior for that? Well, we want the current class to implement that uh, location listener behavior. So what we need to do is simply go back to our activity called GPS a plant, and let's add one more interface to our interface collection. We'll call it location listener. And there we go, location listener. Now, our, we get a red line up here, so Alt Enter, implement methods, and guess which method it wants us to implement? The method called on location changed. So I choose OK. Here's our on location changed method, but even more importantly, guess what? We now have our final variable that we want to pass in to the request location and updates method, and that is an instance of the current object, which is this. So with that now, my entire class compiles. We're not completely where we need to be yet because we have not made a connection request, but not to worry, we'll do that in our, in our next video. In this video, you see we finally have enough information to know where we're going to get a location library, what the parameters are around our location request, and who will get called each time our location changed. So let's wrap it up with that. In our next video, we'll take a look at the Android Activity Lifecycle, and we'll see how it can be used to subscribe and unsubscribe from locations. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.